Morrison. Well, hey, everybody. Um, I'm Mark Lee, and this is a bonus episode of Soul Coffee. Is that right? <laughs> at the show? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, this is low profile, and I'm here with the Black Tones. We got Cedric Walker, Hello. Eva Walker, and Jake Udy. Hello. Hello. And uh, yeah, Hello. there. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. I have to do it twice. <laughs> so you guys rolled down from Seattle. That's where y'all live. Are, are y'all from there? Yeah, we're born and raised in Seattle. He is from New Jersey, which is tattooed on my arm, which. Maybe you can see cameras, maybe you can't. But yeah, I moved to Seattle about 15 years ago. Oh, wow, wow. And um, so you two started the group. How do y'all know each other? Um, that's funny you ask. We were actually in, we were womb mates before we became a band. Ooh, can we get a nice shot of that? Yeah. This is a... That's, that's, that's the uh, ultrasound The photo. ultrasound. <laughs> we made that's t-shirts. exactly what it was when we were in, in mom's that's womb. That's pretty much what it was With like. a guitar and a drum. The guitar yep. and the snare Correct. drum. And we decided to start, we were in the womb, and then we were like, hey, let's start a band. So, uh, yeah, we've known each other for, you know, a very, 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 very long time. <laughs> Our entire lives, basically. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, and I, we have actually a copy of your birth video. Can we show that right yeah, now? Yeah, please do. Yeah, yeah, please yeah, do. Yeah, Here. I think that's good. All right. Let's roll that. Don't you 
So that was the first song on your first album, Ghetto Spaceship. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, lovely documentary footage you got there, by the way. <laughs> Who was the doctor? The doctor was, he looked like he was doing a great job. I think the doctor was great. The dad kind of like passed out. Yeah. Oh, that poor guy. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you tell me about that song a little bit? Yeah. Uh, I wrote that in my... I'm not that I'm that far from my 20s, but I wrote that when I was in my 20s, uh, before I met my husband, and I was, you know. What? What, sweetie? What were you I doing? I was <laughs> curious about things in life, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're in your 20s, and you're single, and you're exploring, and so basically the idea was, um, like, I hate dating or whatever, but I was like, well, but I want to, like, do stuff and I'm awkward uh -huh. so I was like man if I could woo someone I would make them a spaceship and be like look I made you this spaceship come home with me but I don't know how to build a spaceship so I was like it would be put together with like foil and duct tape so hence the word ghetto before the word spaceship so it's just kind of uh, a song about Eva's Hunting 20s. That sounds weird. <laughs> it's Eva's version of a love song, I guess. Yeah, Thank that's you, kind Cedric. of my best Thank you. Yeah, there you <laughs> version of a love song. I was going to ask guess. how uh, how Eva and Jake knew each other. but um, Oh, I was so yeah. I'm so happy to be married. Dating sucks. Yeah. Uh, so it's I'm glad that's over because he's stuck. <laughs> but uh, we, we met uh, five years ago now. Yeah, five years ago. Um, through the music scene largely and um i am a music writer in seattle i was also working um as a bartender for a few years and uh, in columbia city and that's where we met cause eva was living in columbia city where we live now together um but yeah we met through there and we got married three years after dating two years three years after dating Something i think like and we're happily married we're very, ha happy. very happy very happy can't you tell <laughs> <laughs> were y'all collaborating artistically before that went down um, no, we we met and basically started dating immediately. So there was no like friendship or or um, collaborative sort of relationship pro <laughs> before we started dating. But but now that we're together, we've worked on songs and written songs Definitely. together. I've helped out with lyrics or something like that. Certainly now there's a lot of collaboration, but in the beginning it was just courtship. And what they're leaving out is the fact that Jake really wanted to be yeah. my twin. I needed it. Yeah, and uh -huh. he he was like. Absolutely. He met me and was like, "Oh yeah, Cedric is Cedric's the one." So yeah, that's Eva married the man of her brother's dreams. That's, that's right. <laughs> that's exactly yeah. right. Thanks, Jake. You, <laughs> you said that before. Yeah. <laughs> Twin brother-in-law is certainly a, a better title than boyfriend-in-law. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's right. This is what I have to deal with. <laughs> man, so um, I understand you got some new songs that you're sharing with us today. And uh, is there any new record on the horizon that you know of? or um, There's a release we're going to be doing. I just don't know what, when and if it's okay to talk about it. I don't know if we're allowed to talk about it, but we're releasing okay. a single on a really cool label. And uh, the first song you heard is going to be on that. And featured on that song is, I don't know if you guys have seen the Talking Heads video or uh, concert movie Stop Making Sense. Oh, but one we'll, of my favorites. Yeah, yeah one of the sing backup singers, Edna Holt, is gonna is featured on our song "Mr. Minds," and she's singing like some vocal riffing on it. So oh, wow. kind of think like "Great Gig in the Sky," kind of vibe. Um, so that's releasing I sometime early next year, like March or April. Spring, I think. yeah, yeah, in the springtime. Um, and so I think that's as much as I'm allowed to talk about it. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, and uh, the. Um, the second song we did is actually is the most recent release, I believe. The song Where Do We Go Now? And that was released through this small boutique label called Hockey Talker that's ran by Mike McCready from Pearl Jam. And so um, he released those two songs um, from us. And the last song you heard, The Key of Black, is actually Mike's favorite song from us. And so that's kind of how he was like, oh, I want to work with this band. So... Um, we released a single called The Devil and His Grandmother through his label, Hockey Talker. Um, and did he just like track you down or his like manager or his um, yeah, like business partner, business partner kind of he messaged me and was like, hey, you know, Mike saw you guys 
on band in Seattle, <laughs> this TV show that comes on in Seattle, um, where they like highlight local bands, and uh, and he wants to release some music, and I was like, hell yeah, like <laughs> of course, <laughs> um, and so he yeah he's I think he said he was on when I got to talk to Mike on the phone, he said I I think he had watched us on the airplane because it was also airing on Alaska, Alaska. Airlines. Yep. Um, and he told me, he was like, the first time I heard the key of Black Eva, I was floored. And I was like, wow, <laughs> that means a lot. Thank you. And so I like to tell people, I'm like, you know what? If no one ever listens to our music again or buys a record, Mike McCready and my mom like my music. So it doesn't matter. I've already accomplished what nice, <laughs> I want to accomplish. Nice. <laughs> cool. Well, let, let's check out that performance uh, right here at the Happy Birthday House. Here's the Black Tones doing their latest material live. Ready? Go! <laughs> Is that what this is called, the Happy Birthday House? 
yeah that's cool that's awesome yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. appropriate that i guess hannah's hosted a number of birthday parties in the short time that she's lived here nice mm. so. awesome. yeah um okay i had a uh we're we're uh we're off right now because mm -hmm. i had okay i got it um, I saw something that you guys recently did for the Seattle Sounders. Did, did you guys play at a, at a soccer game? We played during, they did this special presentation where the women's soccer team that plays down in uh, Tacoma came up to play at uh, Lumen Field, and it was a doubleheader. So they started, and then the Sounders played uh, Portland, and the... Uh, whole show was based around um, a Jimi Hendrix kind of dedication theme. Uh, the Sounders wore their Jimi Hendrix jerseys. We kind of helped them put, or I, I wouldn't say put it together, but we just kind of helped them like introduce that and like... We launched the jersey. Yeah, helped launch the jersey and stuff. Okay. Uh, and it was right in between the games. And I thought, what I thought was they were going to kind of just pump us into the stadium. People will be still inside, you know, waiting for the Sounders to play. Cause we were playing out in the north lot but what happened was everyone came out oh wow to, at the north lot to watch the performance and it was incredible and it was like i don't know forty thousand people or something like that there uh oh, oh hello uh, hey i haven't seen you all day uh so yeah that was that was pretty incredible and that was a great partnership and the sounders were awesome to you know get us included and, and let us be a part of that yeah so like soccer hooligans at a rock and roll show <laughs> it, at the same time it was a great combination yeah, yeah. um i don't know are, are y'all sports enthusiasts i see you should probably show off this cool shirt that you're wearing jake hey if the one dog second, one, one second one <laughs> second yeah, we're gonna hang out with the duck now i have an nba jam t-shirt which oh, you can you see over the dog too. right tell them about it yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, i'm a big basketball fan yeah uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> All doggy. It's perfect. <laughs> what were we saying, Chuck? All part of the show. Yeah. <laughs> this dog was like, interview what interview? Yeah. Who's yeah. this band? I don't know who they are, so it doesn't matter. It's my show. <laughs> I think she likes the band. Yeah. Well, good. good sign. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's a that's a pretty special thing. How how long has the Black Tones been a band? Ten years. Ten years. Yeah. Ten years. One of those things where if you're an indie band <laughs> and you don't have any, like, industry connections, like, yeah, you got to put in a lot of years and a lot of work to, like, get noticed. So um, yeah. people, a lot of people think we've been a band for, like, two, three years, a handful of years. I'm like, no, nah, this is ten years in the making, man. It's a lot of hard work. <laughs> and there's, like, decades more work, I'm sure, to do. Yeah. And, and we don't die, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm imagining, like, both of y'all being musicians, there was some lead up to where you decided it was a band. Uh, I mean, there there was that, there was a point where Eva did a performance 10, maybe and a half years ago mm -hmm. at uh, Folk Life where, you know, she went up there and, and did something acoustic. And it was the first time I had a chance to hear Eva sing. And she likes to tell people that I was like bawling my eyes out and, I, and like, that's not even the case. I was moved, you know, cause I, I didn't know she had that voice and maybe a tear or two came down, that's about it. Uh, but after that, um, you know, that at that point had inspired me to kind of be like, you know, what can I do to kind of help lift Eve up as high as I can? And I knew Eva was a fantastic drummer from high school she used to play drums uh, for our still pan group. And she would get in there and she would play and then she would do like this crazy, cause like, no, with all due respect to all the other kids there, but you know, they would play and they were good. They are horrible. But, but Eva would play <laughs> and then we'd be doing something and Eva would just hit this fill and all of us on the lead would just turn around and be like, <laughs> you know, like we were just like, what is going on right now? And so I told Eva, I was like, hey, I want to play drums for you. Like, let me play drums. So. We went to the Seattle Drum School, and she taught me how to play drums. And here I am now, molded into her drummer. Um, I think I still have a job after this, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and after that, I was after we did some lessons, some drum lessons, but she caught on super fast. 
um i was like hey i've got some songs written do you want to like learn them and put them together and like and we we did that and maybe about that time we were like this is a band right I yeah guess? it was i was probably like late summer maybe going into the fall yeah of I think 2011 when we or something like that them songs yeah. we were kind of like this is a band but we didn't mm -hmm. like have a name or anything yet yeah where the name come from when how um, did you arrive it was there? originally called rosette royale named after this guy who worked for real change newspaper in seattle um who interviewed me when i was like 16 or 17 because i used to put on concerts and i loved his name and yeah. so i was like let's name it rosette royale and then i remember when i saw him later i told him i was like you know i named a band after you because your name is just really cool and then from there we saw there was a lot of people with called the royales or like a lot of bands with royales and we were like okay let's go with something else and my favorite color is black it's just beautiful i'm not gothic or anything i don't have anything against that but i just uh, like the color it's a beautiful color um and a friend of ours was like what about ebony and the black tones and i was like i don't think we need the ebony part but like the black tones is cool um so we were like yeah let's be called the black tones <laughs> nice i um as an aside, I, I have a solo project, um, but sometimes when I have a band get together to back me up on my material, we'll come up with a separate band name. So like, oh, I and um, I guess it was about six, seven years ago. And uh, the bass player, whose name was Brian Wilson, <laughs> um, nice. he suggested we call the, the backing band the Blackstones after a teacher or no an engineer a music engineer he knew named blackstone wow who, uh, <laughs> he always drank bud light and so they called bud light blackstones and he was like always bringing bud light to our practices he's yeah. like we're gonna pass this tradition on to this unit that's cool <laughs> um so so we're basic we're practically family yeah, That's what I said. practically related. Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, no, it it all. I mean, it all started in my grandma's basement. You know, with yeah. us learning the songs uh, and putting them together, and I am so grateful for my grandmother's basement. And our family's been super supportive of all this. I mean, we come from a family of like educators and engineers, and they all got master's degrees. And like, we like dropped out of college. And we're like, hey, we're gonna start a rock band. Like on paper, they should have disowned us. And they're like, okay, sure, start a rock band. I was like, cool, you're cool with this. And they're like, yeah. My mom's like, it's easy because you guys are good. If you guys are bad, it might be a little bit harder oh, yeah, to they you know, told get into us this. If we were bad. She goes, but your eyes actually sound good. So we've had like a really supportive family, and I just wanted to make sure to mention that because I know not a lot of artists and people are like there, there's people. I don't want to say not a lot, but I know there's artists and musicians whose families are just like you know get a real job. But uh -huh. you know, actually, it is a real job, and you can do amazing things if you have that support system you know and it just takes so much time that. yeah it's like it's such a slow build and then after 20 years it's like this because you're like <laughs> the only one left after because everyone's quit yeah. in a way it's like it takes so, so when you have that support system yeah and like, you guys started early which is really cool and too i remember my mom being like um i remember randomly telling her i was like hey like thanks for being so supportive of this whole rock band thing and like she said to me she's like are you happy i was like yeah she's like that's all that matters to me i was like yeah. oh mom <laughs> god even with like the basement so like great. the basement had all of like their personal belongings and stuff that they had over the years and like my grandma let literally let me and Eva go down there and turn that into a practice space like yeah do what you want with it like and we probably got rid of some stuff we probably shouldn't have got rid of and stuff <laughs> but like all in the name of like letting us pursue should have kept that Babe Ruth rookie card probably <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, just like just little things like that, you know, like, you know, just, yeah, go for it. Sure. You know, they could have been like, don't destroy my house. Like, what are you doing? I don't know what you're doing. I'm wrong, you know, man. But, but also, like, maybe it's important to note that, like, we're first generation Seattleites. Our family's from Louisiana. They're from New Orleans. And so they like love music anyway. Oh, yeah. But like, I didn't know if it would be like jazz versus a rock and roll band. But uh, they like just love music. And my grandma, we would rehearse or and maybe I would run upstairs to get something and she's tapping her foot while the bass and the drums are going like just totally a hundred percent into it. And so that just makes it easier to pursue. It. And I think one of the reasons we've been able to be su relatively successful at it as an indie band is because of uh, our family support and our, and, and my mom sings on stage with us uh, for a lot of shows and my sister used to, 
but um yeah we're like we're a family band my mom's open for weezer my mom's open for death cab for cutie you know my my mom's open for mavis staples like she's been on all those stages with us yeah um it's been really awesome oh that's great you, you ever take your show out to louisiana we haven't yet i no. just he proposed me in louisiana so my first time going there was just a few years ago um oh wow we may have tried but the pandemic like yeah. there's like new orleans jazz fest that has a lot of rock bands and stuff like that but yeah when the pandemic hit a lot of stuff got stopped yeah we went yeah. to new orleans like a year before the pandemic right 2019 or 18 uh yeah it was on halloween but yeah. it was like we went a couple months afterwards yeah. yeah and then we were gonna go again pandemic yeah. hit man i'm sure they'd eat it up absolutely <laughs> i hope so <laughs> yeah and yeah, so how, the Mavis Staples thing totally blows my mind. Just like getting to share the stage with like a living legend like that. And, you know, I mean, that's probably going to be y'all someday. Some kid that's not even born yet <laughs> is going to get to be like, I got with the black tones for a night. Like, as long as that kid doesn't do what I did, because I ruined it. She was right directly in front of me. And she was like, hi, baby. And I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cedric. And like, you know, I'm just thinking What's like my name again. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking like my mom used to play you and stuff. And like I'm just staring and then the security dude's like, All right, we're gonna give Mavis some space and I'm like, I just ruined it. But Mavis, Mavis. Because I got starstruck, you know? Like I like I've never oh, really man. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm sure I've probably been star starstruck before, but like that was just like a whole another level of like Every household has had Star I'll take strike. you there on vinyl. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and I, I just, yeah. I just froze. I was just like, uh, and just, it was, it was very embarrassing. But if, Mavis, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on. There's a dog fight. A legal dog fight. A legal dog fight. Yes, <laughs> a legal dog fight. Um, Eva, your lyrics are largely true to life. And I'd like to give you the platform to speak about your arachnophobia. <laughs> yeah. Oh. This might lead into the next song, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I hate those things. Um, they're like walking letter M's. I don't know. They just look terrible. And uh, since I was a kid, they just, my, how, however my brain makeup is, is made or my wires are wired, they see them and they're like, uh, you're the enemy, you know? Um, <laughs> you feel like so, they're attracted to you? You know, I think that, yeah, I think they're like, hey, there's Eva. Let's go bother her. You know, I don't know. They're just like, let's, let's go see if she wants to hang out. And then the answer is always no. Um, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> uh, well, more accurate title would probably be Cedric. There's a spider in my room because growing up, I feel like he actually killed all my spiders. Yeah. But everyone like doesn't have a Cedric, but, um. Most people have a mom. There so was a I recent was like, incident more re in my car that. Oh my god! By Eva was accusing me of putting it there, but it was by, a conspiracy. By <laughs> by accident, the window was down all night, and Eva had we. I went to. I think I went to pick you up at from mom's house, mm -hmm. and we got in the car, and right next, like once Eva like shut the door and we're getting ready to drive off, like a spider just kind of just plops down it was huge and she just starts flipping out i'm thinking there's like a bee in the car it was awful. you know that would terrify or me like a bear really. yeah, <laughs> yeah you know and i'm like well eva just get it but i forgot she's <laughs> she's like i'm not touching it <laughs> so i had to stop the car grab the tissue uh become spider. a murderer <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't he still doesn't hear the end of it you know i'm just like yeah you know i get in this car to travel with you and I don't know how the spider got me. There's car. a ginormous no spider in it. And I told him, I was like, you should, you owe me an apology. You should take responsibility <laughs> for the spider. <laughs> how are you with spiders, Jake? Are you uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I wouldn't sleep in a bed made of them, um, but I, they don't, they don't scare me. Um, and I usually kill them if I have to. Although before Eva, I would, I'd like to put them in a jar and bring them outside, See, but I don't have I, do. I don't have that time. That we, sometimes time. we just don't have time though. Like, see, all you jar put inners and then let them out. They jar come to my house, <laughs> and that's oh. what they do. And so I'm gonna start blaming you guys for them coming to my Is house because you shouldn't destroy. Them. Them. I like I wave jar one putters, of your hairs in front of them so they can inners. smell it, and then, <laughs> and then they go. Yeah. 
No, they're terrible. Now, little, little, little tiny ones uh-huh. I could deal with. And but when there's little, little them. tiny ones, there's usually a lot of them. They well, that's why it's scary because I'm like, oh, yeah, there's probably a million of these yeah. because there's probably some, like, giant sack of baby spiders somewhere. But they're small enough that it's like, okay, whatever. But when they start, I mean, Smaller ones size, are much more worrisome. They can, like, crawl into your bed and get into your hair and, like, you know, like yeah. teeny tiny ones, you just roll over and kill it or something like that. But like giant ones, and I know giant is relative, but like yeah, yeah, it, it all depends like, on how close they are. Reasonably how, yeah. giant. Yeah, yeah. Spiders, and you, it's 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 so bad that there's literally places in the world that I don't want to visit because I don't want to see, like Australia. I love to go to Australia, but then I also am like, but I don't. So I know there's like yeah, tarantulas yeah. there, right? I thought they were known for like big mosquitoes, though. You know, which is probably not any better. They're but... like t- tropical or whatever. So... Stay out of Texas, too. <laughs> really? They, well, everything's bigger in Texas. Okay. Yeah. Well, sorry, Texas. Um, do you buy that stuff about how um, humans well, like eat other lots of spiders in their sleep but... at night? I don't know if I'm buying that. Because I never caught one in the act trying to climb into my mouth. Yeah. I don't know. I don't I know if that that's somewhere too. Yeah, yeah I think I'm that's just like, something yeah. people tell. It's like a folklore. I don't know if that's real. But yeah, spider in your personal space, not cool. Can't do it. You wrote a song about it. Let's check it out. <laughs>
<laughs> I thought writing a song about it would help with the fear. It made it worse. Of it. <laughs> Not people just bring it up all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, yeah. I could face it. And some people interpret the song like, hey, is this... One guy came up to me and was like, that song you wrote about the clan. I was like, what song? He's like, this the spider song. I was like... Oh, it's not about the clan. I was like, I was like, that's just that's about spiders. But I know why he said that because that shows. I would tell people how much I hate spiders. I would say, this is how much I hate spiders. Ku Klux Klan spiders, and people were like, oh. But it, I'm like, and then I would joke. And, and then like, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's certain states I don't do the joke, right? But uh -huh. um, for the most part, I would uh, I would just say that because it's it's funny and the clan's stupid. And it's funny to laugh at them. So. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, I was just like, uh, it's not about them. It's just kind of funny to compare them to an in insect I don't like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I would end it with like, so if you're a spider or in the clan, you might not like this song. <laughs> but I'm in the clan. But I'm in the clan. <laughs> oh, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. this song's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Pass me my hood. I'm oh, going to go cry. I'm leaving. <laughs> Coat check my hood. <laughs> oh, my ticket for my losers. <laughs> this is the dark part of the interview now. Yeah. <laughs>
played the song they want us dead the key of black mm-hmm. key of black mm-hmm. and allegedly there's a video game mm-hmm. not allegedly yes not allegedly. i couldn't find any evidence of it i found a link that didn't work the link the freaking server's been down the last few months and those people are impossible to contact but um but there is there's, a video there's game. a video game and like there's write-ups on the video game but for some reason lately the link's not working. Of course we're still paying for the freaking server, but it doesn't it isn't working right now. But it's speaking of the clan, it's four levels of hate groups and you fight as me or Cedric. Whoa. And it's it's uh modeled after the Nintendo game Kung Fu. And so the first level you're fighting the alt right and then the and this was all made during Trump's uh reign. Yeah. Right? And um so the alt right's the first level, the second level is the Ku Klux Klan, the third level is the Nazis, and the fourth level is the Confederates. And so you can pick. You go back in time. Fight. Yeah, you yeah. go back in time. Each level goes further back in time. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, um, David, Brender, and Corey Collar mm-hmm. uh, both made the game for us. And um, Corey, who like really spearheaded like the programming and everything, worked completely for free. Um, and Corey's passed away since. But um, I'm we're hence, forever. Hence the server issues. Yeah. Yeah, well, we transferred it yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, um, he was incredible and volunteered his time to do it. Um, so shout out Corey. Shout out Corey. I don't do a lot of video games, but that's that's my era. Kung Fu. Like, yeah, yeah. Not the alt, not the Confederacy, but uh, the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, like like nineteen eighties, eight bit Kung Fu nineties. That's about where I dropped off the video game thing. I love Kung Fu. Mm. That game was awesome. Yeah. Did you ever play that game? I'm trying to remember if I played Kung Fu specifically. On an original Nintendo? Yeah. yeah. It kind of moves back. Like yeah. You go backwards with the... Um, usually in games, you you go from left to right. Oh, right. yeah, so you do. Right, right to, to left. left. Yeah. Okay. Side scroller. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. So, hence the maybe... So, like when the link starts time, working yeah, or when correct. the server yeah. starts working again, hopefully people can actually start playing it again. But as of now, we're still paying for it. You <laughs> can play it. Well, who can the viewers and listeners write to to make sure that that happens? Oh, Capcom. boy. Capcom. Man, you know <laughs> what? Wish. Thanks for asking. I don't have the name of the server on me right now of the site that's hosting it. 
and I don't know how long it'll take me to find that. <laughs> okay. But if we'll I put find it in that, the credits. yes, <laughs> if I yeah, find yeah. that, then I will send it to you and put that in the credits. Like, please write to these people and tell them to get our shit working. Yeah. <laughs> Make it happen. I can't wait to play it. Yeah. Um, it's fun. So any, any plans to travel musically? regionally have you have you guys left the country before to perform canada to, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. To, yeah we've just played in like vancouver yeah. vancouver yeah, yeah. but exotic vancouver <laughs> yeah yeah it's a worldly it. city though it is it um, is <laughs> but no that stuff is actually on the way because we're gonna be signing to a um international secret. label yeah, yeah, yeah who i guess i won't say their name yet but yeah. they're based out of Australia. Speaking of tarantulas. Oh Australia. wow! So you might get your <laughs> chance to face your fears <laughs> there. Yeah, she has to. Um, and there's gonna there's definitely traveling in the in the f- near future. Cool. Yeah. Um. All right. Where where are people gonna find out about this? Um. Our website, theblacktones.com, and okay. then of course all the social media, the Black Tones, it's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter all of that stuff i always feel so corny listing out the social medias but that's, okay. that's the world we're in right. i mean and we can also just throw it in the credits too but this <laughs> this is the debut lp cobain and cornbread that's me on the cover <laughs> <laughs> on the plate <laughs> those are my jokes <laughs> nice and still for you and yeah it's it's a terrific record Thank you, you so it. much. It's gonna get the grooves are gonna get worn out before the, too long. We named it <laughs> we named it Cobain and Cornbread because when people ask bands like, "What's your sound? What do you sound like?" Like our influences are the Northwest, but also the South because we grew up in a very Southern household. So when people would say like, "What do you sound like?" we would be like, "I don't know, a combination of Kurt Cobain and Cornbread." Yeah. So it's supposed to represent like Cobain representing the aesthetic of the Northwest and Cornbread representing the aesthetic of the Southern United States. Nice. Um and that's why we named it that. But I mean, I wasn't listening to Nirvana when I was writing those songs. It's just kind of representative of like who we are and It's kind of just the in the air. Influences of both it's regions. It's in the atmosphere. Yeah. <laughs> it comes out. Yeah. Yeah, I always thought like maybe like Either a like a punk version of blues or a blues version of punk or or none of the above. It's just like it's it's its own sonic force. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's a family band and you can feel that, I think. Nice. In the definitely family band. And just like it's in the vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. So yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming down here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And uh hope to have you back someday. And uh, yeah, everybody, you can find the Black Tones music on their website, and there'll be more links and cool stuff on the Low Profile website, lowprofilepodcast.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And, uh, you know, have a blessed day. <laughs> Peace, <laughs> love, and coffee. coffee. <laughs> Now let's listen to what's in Cedric's ear. (laughs) (laughs) This next song is called Where Do We Go Now? Hold on, let me say that less like an operator. This next song is called Where Do We Go Now? (laughs) I don't know if that was better. I'm sorry. Oh, This next song is called Where Do We Go Now? Where do we go now?